does um, the quarterly mean anything to us? Like for instance, SPY, you can see it's got a quarterly in there for the end of this month. And I've seen it before, but I didn't think anything about it. it wasn't that crucial to me. But now I see that's one of the contracts that has been coming up for December the 30th. And all that's saying is that quarter. that's the that's the end of the quarter. Um, uh -huh. Those contracts would ex expire. So December, you're going to see quarterlies. Um, January, February, March, you're going to see quarterlies. See, March, you got quarterlies. June, you're going to see quarterlies. September, you're going to see quarterlies. And next December, you'll see quarterlies. And the weeklies, that's that that is going to be uh, that's going to be like it, it expires during the week. You follow me? Yeah. Do those? So, in other words, going forward, we can look for quarterly. So, to take something out, maybe uh, three months in advance, or it's a swing. I mean, you could do whatever you want if it matches uh, your, your specific uh, strategy or, or how, however you implement it. I mean. You don't have to take a quarterly contract. There's no added benefit to taking the quarterlies or the weeklies. It's just showing you that that's the end of the quarter. You know what I mean? I got you. I just I thought maybe it was just labeling it as such, but then I was wondering if uh, you know sometimes you'll see a contract in there and you're like, wow, you know, where did that one come from? It almost looks like it's a special contract. Outside of the norm for the like the weekly, yeah, and they, it ain't nothing um, special other than it just expires. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got. I mean, you might okay. have more. Uh, like if you got open interest here is thirteen thousand on the quarterly. Tomorrow you got seven thousand. So more people probably put their money into the into the quarterlies. If you go to quarterly here, you got one hundred and twenty seven. So that quarterly is is not as irrelevant in March as it is. Um, on uh, the last trading day of the year in December. You know what I mean? So to me, I don't think there's any added benefit. I think it's just more more so for referencing. So you know every quarterly is, is a Friday, it, it, and, and that's the very end trading day of that quarter. Okay, that's cool, because I did see huge amount of open interest on it. <laughs> Got you. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. I learned something. I was watching major world market indices on investing.com. Hey, there you go, Yvonne. I do not like to be all over the place, but that is just me. <laughs> uh, anybody else have any other questions? All right. Well, I'm going to get you with one more. Um, I was listening to this uh, YouTube video about uh, stocks that are being added to the NASDAQ. Um, any benefit to watching some of those new stocks that's coming in to the market? Now, uh, reference what you consider a new stock. Are you referencing something that's like IPOing? or? Well, yeah, they refer to it as an, an, a new uh, IPO. Yeah, so um, every, every day there's companies or every week there's there's new companies that are going public and they they get enough money to, uh, to, to become into the stock market. And depending on how much they uh, come up with, that depends on how much, um, how much uh, you'll be able to play. So every company IPO'd at some point. So it is crucial, but like you got to understand too um, that you got – uh, coin, if you go back two years, right, on coin, coin's IPO price happened to be right here. You see, what happened to this price right here? 385 and it's at $32 a share right now. You see that? Yeah, it came, what you said, came in at $3.85 and it's nah, at... it came in at $385 a share. Oh, oh coin, uh-huh, Coinbase, uh-huh. Yep, and it's at, it's at $32 right now. Well, yeah, I, what I was thinking about a lot of times that some, some of those come in and they rally and uh, the ideal is to get in and get, get out as well on some of them, you know. Well, I mean, I, I mean, it, it's, it's with. Do they it, all come in um, 
you have to also verify that they come in as an option though uh, as well. well i mean not really because there's some there's some companies out there that are unoptionable and, and you could have made good returns it, the truth is it, it's one of those universal questions where uh it's either going to rally or it's going to it's going to rally and crack you know what i mean so like the thing is is like are you comfortable putting your money into something that you believe in? Absolutely. So if you believe in it and they're IPOing, then why not put a little bit of money into it? And if it falls against you, you're going to DCA in, into a larger position and you're going to get it on sale. But if it never falls and continues to push up, at least you have skin in the game and you're going to make money. So for me, I, I, I think more IPOs typically trade sideways or fall down and you could normally get them for a cheaper price. So normally I wait for them to uh, find some sort of support and, and it's hard to trade IPOs because there's no history. You have no resistance, no support. So you have no idea what's going to happen. You know what I mean? And, and the reason they fall a lot is because the people that, uh, that, that put their money into the company to raise capital, like coin, people bought into coin at 50 and a hundred dollars a share. And so many people bought into it that they, they pushed up to 385. Now, if you were you bought shares of coin before the public could buy them, right? And it opened up at 385. I don't know about you, but I'm selling my I'm selling my $50 and I'm flipping it. 50 to 100 is 100 percent 200 percent 300 percent 400 That's about a 550 percent ROI. So you put one million in, now you got six million dollars you're coming out with. That's an easy flip right there. Then you can put another million into it and just hold it for the longevity. You know what I mean? Just something to think about. Yeah, definitely. I was just curious about that. You know? Absolutely. Good question, though. I got you. A good one, man. I, I bought that Pax Gold today on BitGet. You did? I, I bought it at uh, 1806. And uh, so did it at 1820, like 2019 today. Hey, look at you over there smiling away, shaking and baking, huh? Yeah, you can see my smile, can't you? Yeah, I can see it. <laughs> you hear it in my voice. Hey, there All you right. go. I appreciate it. <laughs> hey, have a good one. <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions? If not, I'm I'm gonna give you guys your night back. This was a mastermind call. I, I appreciate the questions. Um, I guess let, let, let me look at let me look at my scanner real quick. We'll see if we can find something to keep an eye on. Real quick, and then I'll then I'll give you your night back. <laughs> Oh yeah, we always looking for a treasure. Okay, hey, at least that. we always looking for that. something to watch. To watch. I'll People were messaging me watch. saying, "I want a profit call for stocks and options in 23." So Tuesday's going to be our profit call. You know what I mean? I got you. Yep. All right. So bullish swings. Same thing. I go through top top stock right now by volume is Tcom, JD, JPM. Some of the ones I know. So then what I do is I'll come in here and I'll look at, uh, I'll type JD in. I guess we can make this smaller since we don't need it this large. Um, what I do is I do this. There's, there's no, oops, wrong chart. Where does this swing trade at? Why does this thing want to be playing games with me? It's the holidays. Do you not know that? <laughs> yeah. All right, JD. So JD, I look at, this is what I look at right here. I see on a longer time frame trend, we're trending down. That is not a good trend line. We're trending down. So we're at a crucial, a crucial resistance right now. However, we look to be, we have a high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low, high. We come up and this will be a, a crucial area right here. So when I look at this from a shorter time frame, I zoom in. You know me. I love the 7 and 55 EMA, which is right here. So to me, once that crossed, I'll be looking for some, some buys. So for me, I think if we could break this right here at $60 a share, I think we could easily go up here to $65 to $70 mark. And that's plenty of money to make money. But let's see if we can find something better. Um, JPM's on the list. JPM. We're pushing down. I see. I like something like this. Look, we're 
to me, we're zigzagging down all day long. And then we break this zigzag. Now look, we come down, we should bounce and retest these, these levels right here if we're in a true uptrend, right? So what I'll do is I'll zoom in here and I'll say, all right, we got our first green dot and we're bullish. If we break this, my momentum, we're going to be above the 7 and the 55. If we break this, I think that's a good play uh, to push up. So if we break, I'm going to put an alert right here. Uh, I'm going to keep this on my watch list. And the market's green, green them right now. So uh, buy calls. If you're going to swing it, you could buy two weeks of time. Uh, keep an eye on JPM for calls. Um, I like to get a couple of them. Let's see. Uh, we got Visa on here. What's Visa doing? Nope, we're underneath. I don't like that. It's, it's in the no man's zone. Uh, AA, we're in the no man's zone. What do we got? Netties and Honeywell. Let's try Honeywell. I like Honeywell. Honeywell's a good stock. I like this. We broke this trend line. We're pushing up. And now look, I'm going to put, put a breakout right here. If we break this, create an alert. Uh, buy calls should be should be able to get an easy 10 to 30 percent ROI if we break this we're probably going up here to around uh 217 to 220 ish so as of right now um we got uh Honeywell four calls we got Honeywell and we got um JPM uh four calls and on the flip script we got CME. We got CME. Price is pushed down. It looks like we're in a super downtrend. If we break this, we're probably going to go down to the low, 166. So I'm going to put an alert here. Create an alert. Uh, buy puts. Create. If it breaks that, huge bullish or I'm sorry, a bearish engulfing candle. I like that. Um, what is uh, MS? Morgan Stanley, I believe. Yep. I really like Morgan Stanley. If it breaks this right here, we're probably going down here to revisit this 80 to 75 range. So I'm going to put an alert right here as well. Um, create an alert. Buy puts. Buy puts if we break that. So we got uh, CME. CME and MS for puts. I'll put that in the chat. So, hey, let's keep an eye on them tomorrow. If they break, I'll be taking them. I'll be alerting it, and we'll be good. But, hey, with that being said, it's uh, 903. I appreciate you guys. If uh, you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, never hesitate to reach out. And uh, we will be trading tomorrow. Um, same link that you're on right now. Um, if you want to come have some fun, hey, I'll see you tomorrow. If not, um, I'll catch you guys. You guys have a blessed one. Happy holidays. Hope you guys had fun. And you did not eat as many cookies as I did. <laughs> Green champagne on the 30th. <laughs> what? Make sure you bring the champagne on the 30th. Tequila. Come on now. You know me. Tequila. Okay. <laughs> hey, I appreciate you guys. Yep. Happy holidays. And uh, I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Be Thanks, Brandon. Hey, appreciate you, Yvonne.